Welcome to our next discussion. We're going to be talking about civil liberties. You may recall that previously we discussed four core values that made up the uh, U.S. government uh, system. We looked at the value of liberty. We looked at the value of individualism. In this unit, we're going to compare or combine those two values to come to what we talk about as civil liberties or liberties extended to the individual by our U.S. Constitution. Previously, also, we discussed the fact that there were potential deal breakers in negotiating toward an acceptable constitution. One of those deal breakers being the uh, debate that went on between the large states and the small states over representation. Uh, the deal was reached by the uh, Great Compromise. There was a discussion and a debate that went on between the northern states and the southern states over the issue of slavery. We came up with the three-fifths compromise as a solution there. And last time we looked at the debate that went on between the sovereignty of a national government and state governments, and we saw the idea of federalism as a resolution to that potential debate. Well, there was another debate that went on, and that was the debate over whether or not the original Constitution would have a Bill of Rights. After all, many of the states already had Bills of Rights, and the proponents on behalf of the states felt that there should be a Bill of Rights included in the National Constitution. Unfortunately, it was not of such a magnitude that it became a deal breaker. Therefore, there was no Bill of Rights in the original Constitution. It wasn't until two and a half years later, after a Bill of Rights was introduced into Congress by James Madison and subsequently ratified by three-fourths of the state, that we got the first 10 amendments all at once, which we refer to as the Bill of Rights added to the Constitution of the United States. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at some of the key parts of the Bill of Rights. We'll start out by taking a look at the right to expression and think about it. That many of these uh, founders of our nation who were part of writing the uh, Constitution were descendants from those who had lived under the divine right of kings where no such expression could influence the king. The king was not subject to uh, the whims or will of the people. So they were very strongly about freedom of expression. Next, we have the uh, discussion of freedom of religion. And again, that was very important to many of the founders as their uh, descendants had sought to free uh, those places where they did not have such a freedom to worship as, they, as their conscience dictated to them. Next, we're going to take a look at what is called the freedom of privacy. Now, some scholars have said there's no such thing contained in our Constitution. Even one of our more contemporary justices to the Supreme Court said that there's no such thing as a freedom of privacy found in our Constitution. Yet, many laws today are founded on what has been termed as a freedom of privacy. Then we're going to conclude by looking at the freedom of those who are accused of crimes or the rights of those who have been accused of crimes, uh, which is largely built upon the 14th Amendment. And then we will uh, conclude by looking at the rights and terrorism against war, war against terrorism. So let's dive into our discussion of individual or civil liberty. Enjoy the discussion.